Last week, when we reviewed Saturday night's main event, I gave this big speech about how it was the beginning. This, this show here, I can trace back the beginning of buying a VCR to this show. I watched this show, I like knew everything that was going to happen at every second. Why? I remembered every <laughs> single segment. <laughs> I was super into the build of Mania 6, apparently. I guess. I was right. a big fan of the Ultimate Warrior. My sister was a big fan of Hulk Hogan. I mean, dude, I, I that just... That a lot, actually. I remember all of this. Every last... I didn't even take one note on this show. <laughs> I just remembered all of it. Everything from, like, Dino Bravo randomly doing a running leapfrog or whatever in a match with the Ultimate Warrior. I am so happy. I have, even though I watched this two days ago, zero memory of Dino Bravo doing a leapfrog. <laughs> oh, with the my Ultimate God. You know, There's not everyone... one cell in this head devoted to Dino Bravo doing a leapfrog with the Ultimate Warrior, and I'm proud of that. This show, I guess it wasn't very good. That's what everybody says. Right. I just watched it in love. It's like, <laughs> God damn, it's that show again that I watched 50,000 fucking times when I was young. Nostalgia is a powerful drug. Oh, it's a powerful drug. Yes, the Warriors fucking atrocious. God yes. damn, he was terrible. Dino Bravo, Jesus, God Almighty. Yes. But I just overlooked that, remembering all of this stuff that I used to watch. And it's not like it was an all-time stinker show either. It nah. just wasn't very good. Dude, the Warrior, well, the Warrior match was terrible. But, like, the Hogan-Savage yeah. match. Better than the last Warrior Hogan match Hogan looked watched. terrible. But, I mean, it was fine. I enjoyed it. I mean, what can I say? I enjoyed this show. I enjoyed this trip down memory lane. Uh -huh. And now, everyone from here on out, I probably watched 85 times on the fucking VCR. Well, we begin, as always, at the beginning. WWF, the main event, number three, February 23rd, 1990. So, of course, if you're... For those of you who maybe have not been listening, this show was going to be the debut of Iron Mike Tyson in a World Wrestling Federation ring. But a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Mike Tyson lost. Got knocked out by a guy named Buster Douglas nobody had ever heard of before. What an irony, by the way. This show's at the Joe Louis Arena. How about that? Yes. So... Uh, we are told in the course of this show that Mike Tyson and his management backed out at the last second... <laughs> and I grabbed Buster. I don't know. I honestly don't know who backed out on whom, but I can tell you Mike Tyson was not here, and Buster Douglas was. I'm guessing he was licking his wounds. Brian, any idea? You know, I got to say, well, I'll talk about Buster Douglas. I, I don't even know. I knew everything about this show, so I didn't look anything up. Fair enough. So this Buster Douglas fella, I mean, he was over with these people because he, yes. he'd beaten Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. So. Came off as a cer uh, certainly a likable fella. Sure. He was sure. definitely a baby face. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he explained later on during the show that, well, I beat Mike Tyson, and they advertised the world champion, so here I am. Which makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. But we open with the Macho King, Randy Savage, who warns us all that the Macho King has the best right hand in the world because it's full of macho madness. He has a warning for both, both Hulk Hogan and Buster Douglas. If the right one doesn't get you, the left one will. See, he was swerving him because everybody knows Macho Man's left-handed. I had no idea Macho Man was left-handed. I didn't know that. He's a yeah, southpaw. Remember, remember he uh, he was he hurt his hand pitching, and he ended up throwing left-handed. Just because you're throwing, I, I think that still baseball. makes him right hand. Okay, well, he's but he learned to be a left handed. Yes, yes, yes. He's a very talented athlete, very powerful left hand. If you could throw, if you could pitch with your left hand, certainly, certainly. So we see WWF President Jack Tunney, and some guy who looked like Pete Rose was never identified. I assume it's just Buster Douglas's manager. Yes, they identified him, but I forget what his name was. Okay, was well, they're talking something random like JJ or something. They're talking it like to... he was wearing a magna mega hat. It was a red baseball cap with the mullet to match, actually. So, yes. yeah. Uh, so, uh, Jack Tunney is giving Buster Douglas and this guy instructions. And I think it was the manager who actually said, warns him, if things get out of hand out there, think about Mike Tyson and knock somebody out. We get a Hogan promo who says, when you combine macho madness... With the knockout power of the undisputed boxing champion, James Buster Douglas, 
And I think every time on the show Hogan said it, it was the full name. James mm-hmm. Buster Douglas. When you combine Macho Madness... Well, he knows with, how to get this guy over. He's yeah. do, we're doing his best. He's a pro. When you combine Macho Madness and James Buster Douglas and Hulkamania, something's going to explode. So that was all I knew that was on the show. For all I knew, it could have been a one-hour match, and that would have been it. But no, there is one other match advertised. And yes, we've spoiled it, but when they announced the Ultimate Warrior defending the Intercontinental title against Dino Bravo, mm-hmm. oh, I was Dude, horrified. I watched that match millions of times. Why? Because I was a huge fan of the Warrior. Like, I Why? remembered everything on the show, but man, the Warrior match, like... It was just like I watched it yesterday. Weren't I you remember like 15? Every time or spot. Something? I was 14. Okay. I thought this guy was awesome. Hmm. My sister liked Hogan. She had that Hogan poster that I tore off the fucking wall. Is that the one in the Corvette? I don't know what it was. It was just like a it was like a life size Hulk Hogan poster she put on her, the door of her bedroom. I see. That was disgusting. That's creepy. Yeah. yeah. She was a fan. She was a whole comedian. When the earthquake squashed Hogan. Like, she sent letters. Oh, what? really? Yeah, she wrote letters to the Hulkster. I hope you're okay, Hulk. No. So the match is Hulk Hogan versus Macho King Randy Savage. Now, some of you, of course, we've advertised we've been watching this show for a week now, and uh, I noted a reminder. Uh, there's some similarities to Connor's loss last night and Mike Tyson's loss here in 1990. Some, some. But uh, a lot of people have already watched this show before we did and many of them reached out to me beforehand with one question in mind and it wasn't about macho king it wasn't about hulkster it wasn't even directly about buster douglas it was what is up with this god awful music that the network has edited in for james buster douglas Vinny, may i for a moment have at it i heard this same thing as well Mm -hmm. but if you notice this music Vince, at one point, begins reciting the lyrics. I, did, I missed that. Yes. I don't think this was a network no. edit. No, I can this confirm this. This was the song. I looked up, for those of you who don't know what the song is, it's Buster Douglas's music from boxing. It's called Win It All. You can Google Buster Douglas Win It All and listen to the song yourself. And yes, Mike Tyson's entrance against, excuse me, yeah, Buster Douglas's entrance against Mike Tyson in the motherfucking Tokyo Dome, by the way. Is this song that's being played? And that entrance is on YouTube. I mean, I was just watching it thinking the show's in the 90s. What the fuck's everyone freaking out about this song for? It's just a 1990s song. song. There's a lot of bad songs in the 90s. I I heard many worse than this one. Yes. And really, I don't even, when you think of 90s music, this is not. Yeah. This is not uh, Pearl Jam. <laughs> this is you don't say. Not NWA. This is late 80s, really, pop rap. This isn't even salt and pepper. No, no, much less. So they're doing this match. And the key is, whenever anyone rolls outside, the, the Earl Hebner's the actual in-ring ref. Buster's outside to do his stuff. But whenever anyone rolls outside, Buster's job is basically to be a one-man lumberjack. Mm-hmm. He doesn't throw them back in, but he stops the other person from attacking. And... Savage rolls outside, and Buster sets between him and Hogan, and he warns Hogan, don't you come out here and fight. You keep this in the ring. And Hogan gets thrown outside, and Savage goes to the double axe handle, but Buster steps in the way again with his fists up. So, <laughs> they're doing this match. This never occurred to me before, but do you think when Hulk Hogan delivered an axe bomber, he would whip the guy in and whisper, watch the axe bomber, brother? Thought about no, it. probably yeah. not. So... Eventually, Sherry trips Hulk. Sherry's interfering a lot, actually. She trips Hulk. He goes to grab her. Savage bombs him from behind. Hogan's leaning through the ropes, and Savage does the running sit-down splash of the guy over the ropes a bit. But uh, Buster then catches Sherry choking Hogan, ejects her, and guides her personally to the locker room as you go to commercial. And yes, by the way, this was live. So we come back. Savage is still in charge. He... I don't know if somebody screwed up, but during the heat, they do the double clothesline spot where they clothesline each other, and Savage pops right up. He yeah. knows sells Hogan's clothesline. Well, if you if you watch a lot of Savage matches, he would do the lariat like that. He would do the running lariat where he took the back bump. Yes. That so basically true. what it was was he was doing his normal lariat. Yeah. So it really wasn't so much a double down as it I was. Guess so. Yeah. 
I guess so. So he goes to the axe down to the floor, and I think Buster is supposed to block it again, but forgot. So Savage, says, Savage says, well, I guess I'll just hit this one. Does that, and then it happens a third time, and this time Buster blocks it again. He hits the big elbow. We get a Hulk up, three punches in a big boot. Savage then rolls outside, pulls Hogan outside. They are brawling in the ropes. Hogan punches Savage. Savage flies backward and knocks out Earl. Hogan drops the leg. Buster runs in to count three. So Hogan has one. Well, Hogan hits his his fucking finisher, the leg drop of doom. Yes. Yeah. And Buster Douglas slides in. One, two, and the moment he th- yes. hits three, Savage kicks out of the leg drop. At 3.1, yes. Savage does kick out. Now he kicks out, he stands up, and he's just like walking around afterwards. Yes. It was like Hogan had hit him with a, like he dropped an elbow or something. Yes. I was flabbergasted when I saw that. Now, obviously, the idea was supposed to be that Savage felt that he'd been screwed by Buster Douglas, yes. even though it was a fair count. But that's all a fine story, but don't do that out of the fucking leg drop, for crying out loud. I was flabbergasted. So the match itself is whatever. It's Hogan and Savage going through the motions and doing stuff. The post-match was so great. And that's entirely due to Randy Macho King Savage. I actually thought the match itself, I thought that Savage was really good in the match. He wasn't at his greatest, but I thought he was really good. And Hogan, bro, what happened? Yes, he this was, was going fucking 1996 Hogan all of a sudden. <laughs> I mean, he didn't do shit in this match. And let me tell you something. If I were watching this show with modern eyes and I saw that Hulk Hogan and then I saw the ultimate warrior that wrestled next, I would be like, Mania 6 is going to be the worst fucking match <laughs> in the history of WrestleMania. Well, I think, I, I think we all thought that was going to happen. And incredibly, it wasn't. It was not. I don't know how. A lot of hard work. Bad day for Hogan, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just a bad day. So Savage is getting in Buster's face. He's pointing the finger at him. He's calling him out. Buster is just shrugging, basically. He has no idea what to do. And Hogan is backing off. He's gesturing towards them. He wants them to go at it. He just backs off to the corner. Savage is the best prick you ever saw here. (laughs) He's doing the worst boxing shuffle. This horrible Ali move. He's... Basically daring Buster to fight over and over and over again. He smacks Buster in the face and then goes and does a Shawn Michaels lay down pose in the corner. The crowd is going nuts for Buster. Buster, Buster, Buster. And finally, it's time for the big payoff. Savage has done so many circles around the ring. He's so full of himself, he's forgotten Hulk Hogan's in there too. So as he is posing for Buster, Hogan pushes Savage forward and Buster goes to throw the punch. Now, I'll tell you what happened, and then we can all try to figure out what was supposed to happen. Sure. What happened was Buster throws the punch, and it connects. And it hits Savage in the jaw, and Savage's face recoils. Now, it's not the hardest punch Buster ever threw. It's not like he's knocked this man out cold or broken his jaw. But he's very clearly punched the man. It can't be denied. Mm -hmm. But Savage doesn't go down. He grabs Buster... Very quickly says, punch me again, and Buster punches him again, and this time Savage goes down. All right, so here's here's what I got out of this. Okay. First off, when, when Savage and, and Buster Douglas are squaring off and Hogan just goes back to the corner and just is riling him up, yeah. I was like, look at this guy. Mm-hmm. He's so, a motor. <laughs> I'm pretty sure what was supposed to happen, because I was watching this thing thinking, Savage is getting knocked out here. Of course, and obviously. How yes. do you do this without hurting Macho Man, Macho King Randy Savage? Obviously, you got to put over Douglas, but you don't want to hurt one of your wrestlers. So I think the idea was supposed to be, I'm positive, basically, that Hogan was supposed to shove Savage. He did. So that Savage ran into Douglas. So then he had put his hands on Douglas, and then Douglas punches him out. I see. Okay. So the first punch, I think Douglas just freaked out and just punched too early on live television. Yep. And it wasn't the spot, so Savage just keeps going towards him. And then they did the actual spot. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense for Buster Douglas to throw the first shot. Savage needs to put his hands on him first. And, of course, you had Hogan doing the shove. That protects Randy. That's Randy's out. Right. This, this fucker pushed me from behind, and then this guy punched me out. So that, I'm virtually certain, is what was supposed to happen. And now in the long run, Randy Savage took two punches 
from yes. the world heavyweight champion. That's why I watched this about five times trying to figure out. He was and not I, supposed to take the first one. Of course. But, but, well, yeah. But my, my like, part of me was like, did Savage decide to just no-sell that punch just no. to make Buster punch him twice? No. No. It right. worked out for him, though. Bro, if you're in there with somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, mm-hmm. and they're the Obviously. heavyweight champion of the world, <laughs> sure. you don't want them you're to punch telling twice. me your plan is yeah. to not sell the first punch? Yeah, that's a good you strong, will sell that second punch. That's a yes, strong yes, point. Yes, you will. Yes. That is a strong point. So there is, for those of you who are very skilled lip readers, there is a slow motion <sighs> replay that shows Savage's face the entire time. He's saying something right before Hogan pushes, Hogan pushes him, probably something close to, one, two, three. And then he shakes off the first punch and he grabs Buster and says something and Buster punches him again and that's that. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.